So the three trainings, this is a very important framework in the early Buddhist tradition. The three trainings in brief, uh, this is the translation I'll use, but I'll also mention some of the other ways these terms are translated. I'm going to use the early Buddhist translation of morality. That's the first training, training in morality. The second training is training in concentration. And the third is training in insight. The training in morality is also sometimes called training in virtue or training in ethics. Training in concentration is also sometimes called training in mind or training in meditation. And the training in insight is sometimes also referred to and often as the training in wisdom. So these are some of the other English words that point to and around the kinds of trainings that we're engaging here as Dharma practitioners. And the three trainings model itself is a kind of compression or a way of further organizing another Buddhist model called the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path, of course, is one of those teachings that the Buddha gave is the first in his first teaching. Uh, we mentioned that last week after the Buddha's enlightenment, he for a while sat around and was like, hmm, I don't think anyone is going to get this. And then he realized, oh, maybe that's a little arrogant. <laughs> this is my interpretation of what happened. And uh, he sought out his old contemplative compatriots and said, hey, I think I actually realized something quite important that you might be able to as well. And he taught what are called the Four Noble Truths. And the fourth of these Noble Truths is what he called the path, the Eightfold Path. This is the path that we're talking about here. And so the three trainings is in a way, uh, a way of condensing that down to making it a little more easy to relate to. The training in morality or virtue includes three of the spokes of the Eightfold Path, which is often visually represented as a kind of wheel with the eight spokes. Um, these spokes include uh, the paths uh, of right speech, right action, and right livelihood. They're often called right, although sometimes also interpreted as wise or correct. I'll use the traditional uh, translation of right here. Right speech, right action, right livelihood. Yeah, it kind of makes sense that this is, we're talking about morality here. How you act in the world. And then the training in concentration or the training in meditation includes right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. These are the three parts of the Eightfold Path that are included in that training. And then the training in wisdom or insight includes right view and right intention. And that rounds out the model. So the three trainings are another way of looking at this Noble Eightfold Path, uh, kind of a, a simple way, a simpler way. I'm not having to break it down with so much complexity. We can just zoom out and say, there are these three different things that we're training in, that we're engaging in as a practitioner of the Dharma, the Buddha Dharma. And here I want to share uh, a brief quote from my first meditation teacher, Daniel Ingram, in a book that he wrote called Mastering the Core Teachings of the Buddha. I first ran across this book in 2002. I was a sophomore in college at the time. And I was going to this student group called the uh, Self-Knowledge Symposium, or SKS, this kind of weird group of people at NC State University who are into meditation and philosophy and things. There were many of us. <laughs> this is an engineering school, predominantly, <laughs> not a philosophy school. And uh, in that group, I, uh, the, one of the other group participants was a guy named Dan. And Dan uh, had roomed with Daniel Ingram uh, in Chapel Hill. They'd been roommates where Daniel uh, Ingram had been a student up until very recently. He was f finishing his med school, uh, medical school there at UNC Chapel Hill, just down the road from NC State. And so I very luckily ran into Dan. Uh, he knew I was into 
all this stuff and meditation. I'm starting to meditate. And he said, you should really check out my ex-roommate's book, Mastering the Core Teachings of the Buddha. And I was like, okay, cool. Send it to me. So he sends me this PDF. <clears throat> it hadn't been published, of course, at this time. It just recently been written. And so I went to Kinko's and like, you remember, if you can remember Kinko's, <laughs> and I printed out the whole book and got it like, you know, turned it into something I could actually read. As did a number of my other friends, because we immediately fell in love with Daniel's uh, kind of style and his directness. Um, it was a lot different than a lot of the fluffy boomer Buddhist books, no offense to any of the boomers, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, Daniel's a Gen X kind of voice. And I found that connected with me a lot more. And I liked his hardcoreness. Uh, the, the subtitle of this book, Mastering the Core Teachings of the Buddha, is an unusually hardcore Dharma book. <laughs> so anyway, this is Daniel's overview of the three trainings, how he puts, uh, how he puts what these trainings are about. He says, the scope of the first training, morality, is the ordinary world, the conventional world the world that we're all familiar with before we even consider more specialized topics such as meditation. The goal is to think, speak, and act in ways that are conducive to the reduction of suffering as well as to the welfare of ourselves and others. That's from Daniel's point of view, the goal of the first training, to think, speak, and act in ways that are conducive to the reduction of suffering as well as to the welfare of ourselves and others. He goes on, the second scope, the scope of the second training, concentration, is to focus on very specific and limited objects of meditation and thus attain specific altered states of consciousness that cultivate positive mental qualities and reduce negative ones. That's the second training, concentration. The scope of the third training, he says, that of insight or wisdom, is to shift to perceiving reality at the level of individual sensations. Perceive their three characteristics. We'll get more into the three characteristics soon, but they're basically the selflessness, the impermanence, and the unsatisfactoriness inherent in sens sensory experience. And thus attain profound insights into the nature of reality and realize stages of awakening. So this is a pretty good overview, I think, of how to look at the three trainings from this early Buddhist perspective. These are the three different things that we're doing as a Dharma practitioner. Notice how they're not all the same thing. They have different scopes. One is the scope, you know, first training, the scope is the ordinary conventional world. We don't, you know, in, we, to, to work on the first training, we don't sit and meditate, you know, because <laughs> that's usually not the appropriate way uh, to reduce suffering and increase the benefit or welfare of others. Sometimes it is, it could be, it could be ethical to meditate, right? But uh, we, we, it's important that we don't confuse these trainings. I think that's what Daniel really gets at when he's teaching on the on the three trainings it's like we don't want to confuse them or conflate them because they are different things and they can support one another they can actually be integrated in a way that makes them uh support one another but if we do one training at the expense of the others ah, then we have a problem from the point of view of this more holistic view of dharma <clears throat> 